By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back in Amsterdam at the Twee Klaveren for round number two of the Raging Bull series. We've got over 70 wizards here today battling for the Raging Bull series champion title. So it is exciting. And in round number two, we have Wouter who's on mono green and he is taking on Vicente who is on pink mid range. So these are two pretty quick decks. So maybe it's going to be a short episode, but we are definitely going to see some fireworks. Now, before I start with the deck decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to first go to the match, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG games. So click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about the Raging Bull series. And of course, about the rule set, we're playing full Swedish. So no reprints here, no proxies. This is the real deal. And I have to say these decks are just stunning. And in that same description below, by the way, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy the work that I do, the videos that I make here on Timmy Talks, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of the player on the left, that is Wouter. Let's take a look at his mono green list. And here we see the mono green deck of Wouter. So let's have a look. So first of all, it's completely green. What you see now a lot is people splashing a little bit of black in it, but we don't see that here. So it's just completely green. We also see a lot of one one. So a lot of one drops, four Lanawar Elves, four Scavenger Folks, four Script Sprites, uh, two Emerald Dragonflies and two Whirling Dervish, all main, they're all one ones. So it makes sense here that Wouter is playing with three Pendle Havens. I think those Pendle Havens can be very valuable with this creature base. Um, he's also playing with four Argovian Pixies, of course, an all-star against the Mistress Factories. And he's playing with two Spitting Slugs. And there are, of course, some cards missing here. So in the creature base, we don't see any Urnum Jins. And that means that he's got space to play City in a Bottle main. So there's something to say for that choice. You see more people doing that, going for Spitting Slug kind of as the high-end creature. It's a 2-4 for four, 3 and not playing the Urnum Jin, which is, of course, a 4-5 for four, 4. Very good creature, but Arabian Nights. So if you run into a city in a bottle, it's a problem. And also, it means you cannot play a city in a bottle. And, you know, that can also be a problem, especially when you, like, run in against, like, an early Surrender Pafrit, or worse, a Juzam Jin. Then, of course, with city in a bottle, you can solve that problem. Now, when we're looking at the spells, we see four Crumbles. So just a lot of artifact hate here. And I think that makes sense, by the way, because he's playing four Crumble and also four Ice Storm. So if your strategy is kind of to attack the land base, win the tempo game, you really need your Crumbles and Scavenger Folk to also take care of the Moxen and the other Mana Rocks. You really have to slow them down. If in, in old school, you only attack the land base, that's usually not going to be enough, especially at a tournament uh, like here, where a lot of people actually have full power nine to their disposal. Um, and then there's a card actually missing. We do see four giant groves. That's kind of as to be expected, but um, we do not see. What card do you think I'm missing the most here in this deck? The Berserk. We do not see any Berserks in this deck. I would be really tempted to always play maybe one or two Berserks because it's just so explosive, especially if you have your Pendle Haven. You can make your Script Sprites, for example, a 2-3, put a giant growth on it, make it a 5-6, then play a Berserk, and you're talking about 10 trample damage coming towards uh, the opponent. You know, that can be very powerful. Then again, everybody is expecting Berserk. You're not playing Berserk. That can also be a plus. It's like playing blue and not playing with counter magic. It's the same as playing mono green and not playing with Berserk. Everybody thinks you have it, but in this case, you don't have it. I kind of like that as well, you know? Um, and of course, it means you've got space for other cards. For example, playing that Hurricane main. I think Hurricane is just a really good finisher in green, right? It, it's your direct damage card. Um, other options could be a Storm Seeker, but I, I personally think Hurricane is, is, is better as a finisher. You could even consider playing two Hurricanes. Um, I do love this deck photo. I love the consistency uh, of the deck. A lot of four offs. It's, it's really nice. Nice deck to look at. What I also like is the three Mazes of If in the land base there at the bottom. Uh, Maze of If is a card for a lot of people. It's a card that's all about defense, but actually it's maybe even better offensively. Having Maze of If means that you can attack with three creatures. Let's say he's got one blocker. 
he blocks one of your creatures on, let's say, a Sarah Angel, then you can use your mace, take the creature that's being blocked by the Sarah out of the equation, so that creature doesn't die, and you can still deal damage to your opponent without losing anything. So, I mean, mace, when you play aggressively, is actually kind of a must-have, but he is playing with quite a lot. You see, most of these lists maybe playing one maybe playing two this one is playing three so i'm really curious to see how that is uh, is going to work out so this is the deck of wouter mono green looking really cool wouter liking this list let's take a look at the deck of your opponent and here we see the deck of vicente so it's called pink mid-range but don't let that mid-range word fool you because yes he's got some top end creatures like Suchi and Sarah Angel but this deck can be pretty quick as well and this deck also doesn't need a lot of mana so despite the fact it's not your typical pink weenie deck right with Ironclaw Orc and creatures like that it's still a very like quick and aggressive deck in my opinion and I mean look at the creature base we've got Savannah Lines only one to cast full playset so easy to play we've got Granite Gargoyle which is you know three to cast but still it's not that much two two flyer that you can pump for a red plus O plus one. Um, and then you've got the Suchi, which is only four to cast. And at the top end, you've got those Sarah Angels. And of course, Vicente is playing with the beautiful playset of, uh, well, it's not a playset, but he's playing with all the jewelry, all the Moxen. And, and that's going to really help him ramp up as well. And I'm a little bit worried, to be honest, about uh, Wouter when I'm looking at this list of Vicente. The reason for that is that second row, and especially the left side of that second row. He's got Lightning Bolt that can almost kill every creature on the side of Wouter, right at instant speed. He's got four of those. He's playing two Chain Lightnings. They're, you know, sorcery speed. Moi, I'm not a big fan of Chain Lightning, but I mean, it, it, it'll get the job done, right? It can also kill some creatures on the side of, uh, of Wouter. And then on top of that, he's also playing with Swords to Plowshares, a full playset, and he's playing with Disenchants and uh, Divine Offering that are great against factories. So I'm, I'm just... This is looking like a good matchup, and I haven't even talked about those two fireballs that are there in the deck. So I, I, I just see a lot of like firepower on the side of Vicente, and I think if Vicente draws into that firepower, can kind of kill all the creatures on sight in the first couple of turns, then probably the game is going to be his because on the long run he's got the more powerful creatures, right? So. It, it, I, I'm kind of worried for Wouter, but of course, really good news for Vicente. But then again, you never know how Magic is uh, is going to go. Just another side note: when you're when you're thinking back of the strategy of Wouter, right? Uh, right he's playing Crumbles, he's playing Ice Storms. He wants to slow. He wants to slow Vicente down. The problem, though, is that Vicente, if he just has one plateau on board, he can already play out like the Savannah Lines. He can play out, uh, you, you know, the Lightning Bolts. He can play out the Swords to Plowshares. So. It's 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 going to be a rough matchup for me. Vicente is is the favorite. Let me know in the comments below how you feel about my analysis. Feel free to disagree. Please let me know why in the comments below. Anyway, this is the deck of Vicente. We looked at the deck of Wouter, and that means we are ready for round number two of the Raging Bull series. Here we go. Game number one. Here we go. So Vicente on the play, sitting on the right. Look at that. A plains, a mox ruby. Ooh, and a Chaos Orb. So could have a turn one Chaos Orb. Okay, there we see... I saw a Forest Lana where else went kind of fast. Saw a Strip Mine as well. So yeah, really curious to see how this game is going to go. Two decks that can be quite quick. Of course, the green deck a little bit quicker. But uh, Vicente having a lot of answers to the creature threats. Now, of course, it's up to the players to decide if they want to keep. And we see Wouter here kind of thinking, maybe worried about the mana. Then again, he's got another forest there, so he's fine, right? Anyway, Vicente here starting, and he is opening up with that uh, Chaos Orb. We do see a Scavenger Folk in hand by Wouter. Doesn't have a Crumble, I believe. I mean, a Crumble would be perfect here. Playing out the Scavenger Folk, passing the turn, kind of offering Vicente the window here to flip on the Scavenger Folk. Also has that Fireball. Could decide to go for that as well, or just ignore the Scavenger Folk. That's another line, so... He has got options. Could also play out, for example, the um, Granite Gargoyle, I believe I saw in hand. So that's another thing he could do. He's going to tap two here. And okay, there's a Fireball on the Scavenger Folk. So Scavenger Folk is a goner. And there's a pass. Another Emerald Dragonfly picked up from the top there. So it could just play a land, cast Emerald Dragonfly. It's a 1-1 one, one Flyer, and I believe for 2 green you can give it First Strike. A card from Legends. 
Could also, of course, go for strip mine, strip the planes. That's another line. And then play out a lot of else, for example. So, I mean, there, there, there are some options here. It's one of the things I really like about Mono Green. Like, it's not an easy deck to pilot. You maybe think it's an easy deck to pilot, but you can see here the amount of options that Wouter has every single turn kind of proves otherwise, right? And look at that. Stripping the planes was a very good decision by Wouter because now uh, Vicente is stuck, really needs that third mana to start casting stuff. There we see a Chaos Orb here of Wouter. And he's going to activate it straight away again, offering Vicente the option. Vicente responds by activating his Chaos Orb. So it's basically a Chaos Orb trade here. But if Vicente misses, Wouter can start attacking the Moxen. Ooh, but it's a hit though. He is lucky. Wasn't the best flip. But hey, it's a hit. That's all that counts. And there's the pass turn. Can he find a land? Ooh, is that a bounce from the top? This is a problem for, uh, for Wouter. I believe both players, yeah, four cards in hand, Vicente five. So yeah, could just play out the balance. Doesn't even have to discard anything. And look at that, Wouter losing his Lanora Elves and his land. So this is a Wrath and an Armageddon, one-sided in one single card. Just insane. Perfect top deck here for Vicente. And uh, all he needs now is another land and he can uh, start casting stuff. Here we see a Mishra's Factory for Wouter. And there is the uh, Dragonfly 1-1 one -one Flyer. And there's also the Lightning Bolt. Yeah, so this is a concern, right? Let's say next turn, Wouter activates the factory. Ooh, we got to zoom in. Let's say uh, Wouter activates the factory and attacks with the Dragonfly. Then Vicente can cast a Lightning Bolt and a, uh, a Swords to Plowshares. And here we see a Swords to Plowshares on the Emerald Dragonfly. That means one life here for Wouter. I'll, uh, I'll keep score for you, but I'm sure we'll zoom out sooner or later. So 21. And okay, there's an Argovian Pixies, a 2-1. There's a Chain Lightning here on the Pixies. So I mean, Vicente kind of doing what his deck can do really well, which is kind of destroy everything in sight. And um, of course, uh, Vout here, just keep casting creatures, trying to deal some damage. And there's finally the third mana source for Vicente. So now he can start casting Granite Gargoyle. Tapping three here. There's the Gargoyle 2-2 two, two Flyer. You can pay uh, a, a red and give it plus O plus 1. And I mean, I think if you're Wouter, depending on what he has in hand, of course, I mean, you want to attack here with the Factory, perhaps, offering a trade. So I wonder what he's going to do. There's the attack with the Emerald Dragonfly. So kind of signaling that he has a Giant Grove here. And there's a crumble on the ruby and passing the turn. And that makes sense because, of course, red mana are now valuable for Vicente because of that gargoyle. And again, Vicente is looking for that third mana source to start to playing out his other gargoyles. Look at this. He's actually being the aggressor and attacking here. That surprises me a little bit. Then again, maybe he wants Wouter, of course, to animate the factory and attack so he can play that bolt on it. There's the attack with the Dragonfly. And I believe Vicente is now on 18, so still very high. And then there's a Script Sprites and a Pass. So both players kind of, you know, stumbling on mana here. Despite the fact that their decks don't need much, but they need a little bit more. Especially Vicente really waiting for the third land. Yeah, this maze is really good because now because of the maze, he can keep attacking. This is a very big deal, attacking with both. And are you going to see that uh, offensive power of Maze of If? And I believe we also see an Ice Storm, by the way. Okay, now we're zooming out again. So there's the block. And yep, there's the Giant Grove. We're probably going to see a Lightning Bolt. Exactly, we're going to see a Bolt here. And of course, yeah, this the... The Gargoyle doesn't die, of course, for a moment there. I thought, hey, what's he doing? But quickly puts it back on the battlefield. So 17 life here for Vicente and then 19 for Wouter. And there's a pass. Yeah, those bolts are so good. Vicente picking up another bolt from the top. Ooh, if that's an Ice Storm, he can now cast that Ice Storm. Oh, that's really good. He could play that Ice Storm on the plateau. It's exactly what he does. Are we going to see a bolt now on the Dragonfly? Yep. 
That's the bolt, but this ice storm is really important. Vicente is really struggling here, not finding any red mana at least. Okay, there's a giant grove, and the other card is that a spitting slug? Oh, that is really good right now, the spitting slug. A 2 4. That is perfect. And no red mana for Vicente. So Wouter has an opening here. He's got two giant groves in hand, I believe. Could consider, of course, also attacking. With the factory, try to be a little bit aggressive here. I think that would be a good move. Exactly. Of course, you you have the risk of running into a disenchant, but you got to take the risk, right? And yep, there's the growth. So he's dealing um, seven points of damage. Vicente dropping to ten. He really needs. Okay, disenchant can help. I want to say he really needs a land for a suchi, preferably a red source, of course. Ooh, another ice storm. And now this is a question for Wouter, what to do? Am I going to animate or am I going to ice storm? He's going to ice storm. That is the good decision. There's the attack. Vicente dropping to eight. Ooh, there's a city of brass. So now he can cast that uh, granite gargoyle number two he's got in hand. And then he can double block, but that's risky because we know that that one card in hand for Wouter is a giant grove. So this is an important moment here for Vicente. And he's not doing it. He's passing the turn. He's being patient. Keeping Disenchant open. And he is going to animate. So I'm expecting a Disenchant here. And yep, there we see the Disenchant. And now he's going to block. And he's probably going to pump the Gargoyle. And he could play a Giant Grove here. No, it's a script sprite. It's not a giant grove. I thought it was a giant grove, but it's not. There we see the other gargoyle. So uh, Vicente now on six, though. This is a very exciting first game. There's another mace and a Lanawer elves in hand. There's the second mace. Could now attack with both. I mean, he could double block. You've got the mazes anyway. Yeah, just a. I would consider attacking with both, to be honest. So now he can give the Spitting Slug first strike, which is actually relevant. This is so cool. I love these quirky abilities on these creatures. It looks like he's taking the damage because of that, and rightfully so. And then we see Wouter playing the Lanora Elves uh, in second main. I mean, Wouter is close, but he's not there yet. And if Vicente can find land number four, he can start casting Suchis. Things will get worse. There's the attack. Same situation again. He can give it first strike. Wow, 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 wow. What a scenario here. It looks like he is going to go for the double block. Of course, he can use the mace to take it back. The thing is, if he gives it first strike and deals the damage to one of the creatures, Vicente can pump the toughness to three. So it can make it a 2-3. I think if I would be Wouter, worst case scenario, exactly maze it. I mean, you don't have to lose anything. I feel what he could have done here, but it's of course simple from, from my position here, is just attacking with all three creatures because he can block two creatures at most and you can take them out with the uh, mazes. We see a Mind Twist, by the way, being uh, drawn here by Vicente. There's another forest. That's not going to be very helpful. The other card I cannot see. Yeah, now he's attacking with three. That makes sense. He's got the mazes anyway. No matter how he blocks and if he blocks the spitting slug and puts a city of brass, that, that takes, takes the damage as well. So he's going to block the script sprites and the slug. So in this case, I would just... Take the script sprites out of the equation, right? You deal one damage, put him on three. And if he wants to save his, uh, his own gargoyle, he's uh, going to take a damage from his own city of brass. He will drop to two. So it's basically a win-win. Yeah, so he's going to take it out of the equation. That makes sense. He's going to pump it up. Yeah, this is a perfect scenario. Oh, Giant Grove winning it here. Wow. 
Wouter winning it here. And I was actually, the thing is when you're sitting here looking at the game, it's really easy to say, okay, he's got two blockers, you've got three attackers, two mazes, just attack with all three. It seems to make sense, but I've been in Wouter's shoes. I've been in that position where you look back at yourself and think, why didn't I do that? It's really hard in a match to kind of have that overview. And um, he did, he did, you know, solve the puzzle eventually. And uh, that gave him the win here in game number one. Now do remember, it is just the first game. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's uh, Vicenta on the plate. Let's have a look. There's a soul ring in hand there. A Mox, lots of mana actually. He does have a Demonic Tutor and a Batlands. That's pretty good. And we see Lana Rael's Tranquility there. Coming in from the sideboard perhaps. Maybe against uh, a potential Blood Moon. There we see a uh, Mox Pearl here for Vicente on the opener. Also see a Crumble by the way in hand there for uh, for Wouter. And there we see uh, the Soul Ring. Is he going to go Batlands and then play Demonic turn one? I think that's what he's going to do. He could go, for example, for a draw seven. So he could use Demonic to pick up um, a Wheel of Fortune. Right? And then try to like empty his hand next turn and then go Wheel of Fortune. It's risky, though, because you know that you're playing Mono Green, which is also a super fast deck. So if you go for a Wheel, you got to like plan to play it out next turn or latest to turn after, but maybe that's already too late. Anyway, Vicente here uh, using the Demonic Tutor. Beautiful Black Border deck, by the way, Vicente. Very, very nice. Let's see what he's going to pick up. I couldn't see it. It went too fast. I think it was the wheel. I think so. So he's shuffling up. Has one mana floating. And is he now doubting if this is the right card for him? I could kind of, I, I mean, a wheel would make sense here, right? Because, I mean, it's so easy to kind of empty that hand that he has next turn. Then a wheel can really be good. Again, I cannot really see it. There we see Vicente here offering a Wouter to cut. And Wouter's like, I'm fine. And he's cutting it himself. Yeah, it is a wheel of fortune. Beautiful black bordered copy, by the way. Wow. Beta wheel. You don't see that often. Anyway, crumble here on the soul ring. That's a life. So again, Wouter kind of chooses to first go for the Crumble. Also could have done, um, of course, a Lanora else. I do think that the Crumble here is a good decision. Now it's going to be harder for Vicente to kind of empty that hand and, and, and use that uh, Wheel of Fortune. And now he's drawing into a Sarah Angel, which is, of course, a pretty slow card. He's got a few options here. Could go for Blood Moon, a card that doesn't do much, but hey, then it's out of your hand. And then maybe next turn, if you draw a land, you could go Chain Lightning and Wheel. Another option is just to wheel, say whatever. Of course, he can also just play Chain Lightning past turn. There's not really a perfect play here for Vicente, right? I think the fact that uh, Wouter took care of that Sol Ring changed a lot here. Can you imagine if Vicente still would have had that Sol Ring and would have top decked that Sarah Angel, which he did. He could just slam it on on the battlefield straight away, but now he's in a difficult position. So again, a, a good decision by Wouter here to go for the crumble of the Soul Ring instead of play Alana Elves. You can see Vicente here. Yeah, he just wants to use all his mana here and going to go for the uh, Blood Moon. And Wouter has got so many options right now. Going to go for second forest. He could go Scavenger Folk and Alana Elves, for example. Gonna go for Script Sprites and Scavenger Folk instead. Could use, of course, Scavenger Folk next turn to kill the uh, Mox Pearl. I wonder if you're Vicente, you're probably gonna play a chain here on that Scavenger Folk. Yeah, there's the chain. Now, do remember all those dual lands, by the way, of uh, Vicente are now mountains. So he's got two mountains and two planes. There's the pass. Yeah, he, did, he doesn't wanna play out the wheel. He wants to keep his Sarah. He knows how powerful the Sarah can be in this matchup. There's a Mishra's Factory, which is actually a mountain. There's the attack with the Script Sprites. 20 now for Vicente passing the turn. Is he going to find land number 5? Well, mana number 5, I should say. Land number 4. Finding a uh, 
sorts to plowshare. So, I mean, again, I'm thinking, you know, he could go sorts wheel. Yes, he loses the Sarah, but whatever. Maybe you're going to draw into a new one. Because the longer you wait with the wheel, the better the wheel will be for Wouter. Because he's just going to empty his hand, right? Wouter attacking for two. Are we going to see a sorts? Not animating. Of course, he cannot animate the factory because it's a mountain. Tapping. Ooh, there's a tranquility. Taking care of the blood moon, passing the turn. And it's so interesting if you're the green player, there's so many options for him. Could have also gone for, for example, Chaos Orb and flip on something. And there's the Granite Gargoyle, which is quite a good blocker at this moment, because I don't think Wouter has a Giant Grove in hand unless he just picked it up from the top of the deck. And this is also a moment where you really want to have a Maze of If, because then you can just keep attacking. Here's another forest. Okay, you can actually flip now. Of course, with that Chaos Orb, so we're going to activate the Chaos Orb, flip on the Granite Gargoyle, then he can attack for four. There's the flip. Uh-oh, is it going to be a hit? Yes, it's a hit. Exciting stuff. I love seeing these flips. We've now seen the flip in both of these games. There's the attack for four. And now you can see Vicente thinking, should I swords the factory? I mean, that's the target that would make the most sense to me, at least. It looks like he is going to fire it off. He's going to go for the script sprites, though. So goes for the sprites, takes three, drops to 15. Perhaps he's going to go for the script sprites because of that flying creature, the Sarah Angel, he's got in hand. Ooh, there's a lightning bolt. Yeah, that's the thing for Wouter in this matchup. Vicente has so many good like creature removal cards, creature removal spells in his deck against Wouter. There's the animate, there's the attack. Probably going to see the bolt now. Yeah, there's the bolt. But, oh, there's a giant growth. Yeah, that is ideal. This is a perfect situation for Wouter. Look at that Vicente dropping to nine. Oh, he's in trouble. Remember, already a game down. Finds a Mox Jet, though, right on time. Slamming the Sarah Angel onto the table. He is back. And uh, Wouter now in top decking mode. And this is not great for him. Can he find a Maze? Like, a Maze would be really nice. Or, of course, a Giant Growth. Those are the two cards I guess he's looking for. You could say a Hurricane. Hurricane would be even better. Because then you would kill the Sarah and deal four damage to Vicente. He would drop to five. There we see a Wailuli Wolf. So it's a 1-1 one, one creature from Arabian Nights. You can tap it to give target creature plus one, plus one. A card that I believe comes in from the sideboard. He's going to use the Scavenger Folk here. I guess you've got to go for the Pearl, right? Exactly, because he's got his Black Source with the Badlands anyway. So this makes sense. You could also say maybe just keep the Scavenger Folk. Then again, you know that if he has five, he can cast his other Sarah Angels. And remember, these players, of course, don't know each other's lists. So maybe you're thinking, okay, if he has four Sarahs by destroying one of his mana sources, at least I don't have to worry about this. And this is showing, by the way, the strength of Sarah Angel, right? Vicente can just attack with it and use it as a blocker at the same time. That is huge. I really wonder what Wouter uh, has in hand there, what he picked up from the top of the deck. It's probably not a Hurricane or a Maze, or else he would have played out quite uh, quickly. So I think there are three cards that he's looking for, right? Which is Giant Grove, Maze of If, or Hurricane. Preferably Hurricane. Vouter really in the tank here. Realizing the longer he waits, the better chances Vicente will have. Playing out a Pendlehaven here. I mean, Pendlehaven's good, but not good enough. I mean, together with the Wailuli Wolf, it means you can make... Oh, he's going to animate. He's going to swing in. Offering the trade here. Very interesting. There he goes. He's going to deal three points of damage here. So he's going to say, I'm going to lose a factory, but I can at least deal three damage to you now. So basically using the factory in a way kind of as a bolt. Oh, what are we going to see? 
Oh, uh, there's the sword to plowshares. Probably in response to the Wailubi Wolf or in response to the Pendlehaven. In response, he can still pump it. So he can still gain two, but... Yeah, this sword to plowshares is pretty problematic. This whole attack here is pretty problematic now for Wouter. I do understand Wouter, he wants to keep pressure on the life total. But this has really backfired on him. He's lost two creatures. No cards in hand. And it's interesting to see, by the way, that Vicente is probably not going to play out the wheel anymore. Unless he really, really has to. Because he's in the lead now anyway. He's just going to fly over. And I mean, the Sarah Angel is just so good. The fact that it has Vigilance makes this card so incredibly strong. And here Vicente now in the tank. I mean, he's got a City of Brass and a wheel in hand. Ooh, and a fireball. Ho, ho, ho. That is, oh man. I think I would just keep the fireball in hand. If you fire it off, okay, he is going to fire it off. It's going to deal one to each. And I think he can actually survive. No, he can use the White Lily, right? On the other, on the Argovian Pixies. And the Argovian Pixies could have survived, right? Or am I missing something? I think he could have he could have kept his Argovian Pixies alive because he could have used the Wailuli. Anyway, maybe I'm missing something. There's the attack with the Sarah. Wouter dropping to seven. There's another Suchi. Or actually, there's a Suchi, not another Suchi. It's the first Suchi. Seven now here for Wouter. Oh, it was looking so good for him at a certain moment in the game. But I'm happy for Vicente here if it's going to be a 1-1. Because I'm really enjoying this matchup. I would love to see a game number three. Attacking with both. Kind of signaling or pretending to have a giant growth in hand. So what are you going to do here if you're Vicente? He's thinking about just taking the damage. I would consider... I, what I would do, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do. I would just put my... Suchi in front of the Spitting Slug and not block with the Sarah because the Sarah is just so good. Because then if he has a Giant Grove, you're going to take 5 points of damage. You're going to drop to 4, which is not great. But then the Spitting Slug is going to die or your Suchi is going to die because of a Giant Grove on the Spitting Slug and then you only take 2 points of damage. But at least you're not going to lose your Sarah. Another option, of course, is for Vicente just to take the damage. Because if he has a giant growth, you're not even going to die anyway. But I mean, that's a risk though. That's a big risk. What if that card is a hurricane? Then again, he would have played it first main. Anyway, I'm really loving this attack by Wouter. Kind of putting Vicente in a difficult spot. In general, I really like the, the aggressive way that Wouter's piloting his deck. I think that's quite important when you're playing uh, the mono green. So Vicente really realizing that this combat step is probably going to be vital. And he's saying, I don't know what he's saying, but they're shaking each other's hands. Saying, you've got this. I guess, I guess Vicente said, I'm not blocking. And there was that giant growth, so he could have dealt uh, two, four, seven points of damage. Vicente would go to two and then attack with both creatures, winning the game. So he's won game number two. And I'm happy with that because it means it's 1-1. One, one, and we're going to go to an exciting, thrilling game number three. Game number three, the big decider. So Wouter on the play here after losing that second game. Here we see the hand of Vicente. Ooh, we see a Demonic, Savannah Lion, Fireball. Here we see the hand of Wouter. Wouter starting with the Lanawar Elves, by the way. Having an Ice Storm in hand there, I believe. So he could play Ice Storm turn two. Vicente going to go Plains here into Savannah Alliance, probably. Yes, there's the Lions. 2-1 Vanilla. Ooh, there's a Strip Mine from the top. So could also choose to Strip. Going to go for an Ice Storm here instead. Probably the better choice. Using all your mana. Being super efficient. Passing the turn. There's the attack with the line. So uh, Wouter dropping to 18. And there we see the Badlands, and that means that next turn, Vicente could cast the Demonic, unless, of course, Wouter is going to use his Strip Mine here, which I kind of expect. Could also go for Pendlehaven. 
Yeah, I'm going to go for Strip Mine. I think that's the correct play. Taking care of the Badlands. Can also attack for one here. Exactly. Going to put Vicenta on 19. Passing the turn. There is the City of Brass. So I, what, I, what I like here about Vicenta is that he plays the City of Brass last, knowing that's kind of the card that gives me all the mana that, uh, all the colored mana that I may need. Here we see a Pendlehaven, so could attack for three here. Could pump it, of course. Is not going to, though. And second main playing the Lanover, so wants to keep the Pendlehaven to pump the Lanover that's, uh, that he just put on the battlefield to potentially block the Savannah lines. And here's an interesting moment for Vicente. He's got two options, right? He could tap the City of Brass, take a damage, play a Savannah line, or tap it for red. Play a Lightning Bolt, kill the Lanawar Elves, attack with the lines. He actually has a third option, which is do nothing, pass turn, keep the mana open for the Lightning Bolt. So he's got some options here. The problem, of course, for him here is that he needs lands, he needs mana, he needs, you know, he's got that Fireball, but that Fireball only is good if you've got enough mana to pump into the Fireball. There's also a Sarah Angel there in hand, a Demonic Tutor as well, and then two other red cards there on the left side. So Vicente really uh, in the tank here, trying to figure out what the best line of play is here. 1-1 one, one, round number two of the Raging Bull series. We're playing at six rounds of Swiss in total, and I'm going to show them all here on the channel. And after that, we've got a top eight, a top four, and a finals. And here we see Vicente playing out the Savannah lines. Ooh, there's a spinning slug. That is really good in this scenario. That is such a fantastic draw for Wouter. Spinning slug, uh, two green and one for a two four. And if you pay a green and one, it gets first strike. If you don't, then the creatures of your opponent actually get first strike. The creatures block in the spinning slug. And I think, I think it's one of the better creatures in the dark. Maybe even the best creature in the dark. I also really like Ghost Ship. Those are the two creatures that kind of, you know, pop up in my mind when I think about the dark and creatures. No land found for Vicente here, by the way, passing the turn. I mean, it's, it's, it's looking really good here for Wouter. I would consider just, yeah, exactly, turning all your creatures sideways into the red zone, right? Lunar Elves 1 and 2 and the Spitting Slug. There he goes. Yeah, this is tough for Vicente, so he's just going to block both Lanawar Elves. He's going to pump one in response, probably going to see the Bolt. There's the Bolt, but it does mean a damage here for Vicente. And he's going to lose the line, and he's going to take two more points of damage, so going to drop to 11. And let's see uh, what else Wouter can do here. Tapping two green for an Argovian Pixies, 2-1 creature from Antiquities. All damage dealt with by artifacts is reduced to zero. And I finally found another land. Now at least he could play out the Demonic. So if you would go for Demonic here, which I think is kind of the only option, right? It's the only card he can play out. He has to do something. So you go Demonic, you drop to 10. Then the question is, what are you going to pick up? I mean, if there's a Gargoyle in hand, which I cannot see, but let's say there's a Gargoyle in hand, you could consider going for a Soul Ring. And then next turn, you can play Soul Ring and Gargoyle. Then again, a 2-2 Flyer. Uh, it's not great on this board. You could just go for a Swords to kill one of the two creatures. Kill, of course, then the Spitting Slug. Another option could be is that you say, you know, next turn, I'm going to, you know, block my Savannah Lines, maybe on the Spitting Slug or maybe trade it for the Pixies. And then, you know, pick up a balance now with Demonic Tutor, play out that balance next turn. The downside of that is that you're going to lose a big part of your hand. The nice thing is you're going to kill the creatures on the side of, uh, of Wouter. And, of course, Wouter will have to uh, discard two of his lands. So I think, I th personally, I think maybe balance is, is, is the way to go. It's, it's not ideal. But I think from where I'm sitting and when I'm looking at this game, I, I would consider taking a balance. Oh, look at that hand, by the way. It's got two uh, Blood Moons in there. They're, they're just not looking great. I think there are two Blood Moons in the Suchi. It's going to take a damage. It's going to drop to 10. There's the Demonic. Yeah, kind of has, has to do that. It's the only card in his hand that he can actually play out at the moment. Let's see what he picks up. So there's a Swords there. 
Looking at the Chaos Orb, yeah, that's not an option, I think. Soul Ring, skipping the Soul Ring. Looking again at his hand. I don't, I, he's not playing with, um, with Black Lotus, I believe, or else Black Lotus could have been a good option as well. So going through the motion again, and um, yeah, what to pick up here? I would be really tempted to go for a balance. There's a Spirit Link. Spirit Link could be interesting. You could play Spirit Link on uh, the Spitting Slot. Going for the Spirit Link here. Okay. That's a little unexpected. Maybe he boarded out the balance. Or maybe he just really maybe he really just wants to keep his hand. Realizing like if he can get back control, you know, and then just slowly find some more lands, he's probably gonna win it with his hand. The problem is he's on 10 and he's he's under pressure. There's the attack. So probably gonna block the uh, exactly there. Govian Pixies. Are we gonna see a growth? We're gonna see a growth. Again, kind of a difficult decision here, I guess, for Wouter. Yes, your Argovian Pixie lives. On the other hand, you could also consider putting it on your Spinning Slug, dealing three more points of damage. Then again, having two threats on the board is better than one. And there we see the Spirit Link, of course, on the Spinning Slug. And there's the pass. I do hope that both players know the um, how Spirit Link works, right? I think they do. So you first take the damage, then you gain the life, which could actually be relevant in this match, especially when you're uh, as low as uh, Vicente is. Oh, of course, the Tranquility that Bouter still had in hand. That's a perfect answer to the Spirit Link. There's the attack for four. Probably now going to fire off that Swords to Plowshares. So going to drop to seven, exactly. Swords to Plowshares on the Spinning Slug. Take two more points of damage. Going to drop to five. And of course, uh, Wouter's going to gain some life, going to go up to 18. Oh, what a thrilling match this. But um, Vicente really with the back against the wall. And of course, that City of Brass doesn't help. Okay, there's another Mana Swords. That's good news. A Mox Sapphire from the top. Yep, there's a Fireball, but has to take another damage. Going to drop to four. In response, we see a crumble on the Sapphire. Oh, ho, ho, ho. now both players in top deck emote. 18 life for Wouter. Is there another threat in hand? Oh, another Argovian Pixies. Oh, Vicente, you need to do something. Oh, no. Oh, no. Attacking here, Vicente dropping to two. There's a Scavenger Folk. Oh, another City of Brass. He's going to kill himself. Wow. Wouter winning here and... I mean, that, that shows how little I know of Magic. I don't know if you've checked out the deck decks, but I was I was talking in the deck decks and I was saying, I think Vicente is the favorite because of the lightning bolts and the, and the, the swords to plowshares and stuff like that. You know, I really thought he had uh, the, the better list in this matchup. I know that Mono Green is really good, but I thought in this matchup that Vicente was the favorite. But hey, I'm wrong. Look at it. Wouter winning here 2-2-1. Two, two, Congratulations, Wouter winning round number two here of the Raging Bull series. And that was round number two. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did. Very, very thrilling match. And uh, next week we have round number three for you. And good news if you're a fan of Mono Green because Wouter will be back with his Mono Green deck and he's taking on Yap, who's on Twiddle Volt. So, I mean, that's gonna be an interesting matchup, right? So that's round number three. Now, if you wanna make sure you don't miss a thing, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Okay, so if you've done that, you cannot miss a single update. And also, if you want to, you can like, comment, and share this on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also, of course, become a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks. And if you become a tier two supporter, so for $2 or more, uh, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. Isn't that cool? Talking about the end scroll, let's go.
Just think it's a somber kazee. 